afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Um, Patrick McDonald, and we're going to talk about the time more and AT&T mergers. Just a brief overview. Uh, the discussions began in 2016 and <coughs> finalized until May of 2018. And the deal is to unite Time Warner's TV shows and movies that they stream with um, AT&T's enormous distributing, distri distribution system. Uh, the goal for AT&T in buying Time Warner is to earn bigger profits uh, through their advertising and mixing their consumer data with Time Warner's content that they already have in place. And they want to create a media and telecommunications powerhouse by reshaping the landscape of those industries. So why AT&T? Uh, they have over 170 million direct-to-consumer relationships across their TV, video streaming, and mobile services. And AT&T provides Time Warner with a direct pipeline to viewers that they uh, previously didn't have. Uh, AT&T is a leading wireless and fiber network, and they're currently investing in new technology such as 5G. And Time Warner felt that merging was their best way to compete against um, who they deemed were their competitors, um, such as Netflix and Google and Amazon. Uh, AT&T purchased Time Warner for 85.4 billion. Um, the people who had stakes in Time Warner received 1.437 shares of AT&T stock in exchange for every one share of Time Warner stock that they had, and that averaged out to about $53.75, and that totaled $42.5 billion in debt for AT&T, which increased their debt from, uh, or helped increase their debt from $134 billion to $180.4 billion. Um, they expect to have $1.5 billion in annualized cost synergies, which is um, cutting out their expenses by the end of the third year, as well as um, an additional billion dollars of annualized revenue synergies by the end of the third year. The initial market reaction uh, was not, not very positive. Uh, AT&T stock fell about 3%, and Time Warner shares were up 5.3%. To more than $100 per share. Uh, AT&T's total debt, like I already mentioned, went from $134 billion to $180.4 billion, and AT&T stock is currently, or was currently, was trading at multi-year lows, but it's projected to um, bounce back and reach historical numbers by the fourth year. Uh, this merger, uh, it's, it's going to give the green light for uh, more vertical deals that they wouldn't originally associate with each other. And it's also uh, potentially gonna result in Comcast looking to acquire Fox. Um, Disney is trying to acquire Fox, but this merger right now is going to kind of push Comcast to do it first. Uh, the public opinion of it is that at t will have too much power and um, they didn't really think that there was a need for one company to control the medium, the medium and the message, so they didn't feel that they need to control the content as well as the distribution channel. Um, and that it also created a monopoly um, with too much power, high prices, and a reluctance to upgrade. Uh, the Department of Justice um, filed a lawsuit and it said that it ignored mainstream economics and that it would, the merger would result in AT&T and Time Warner both controlling <coughs> the market and there would be higher prices charged to consumers. And it was really a win-win for AT&T and Time Warner because um, they were merging in, in order to better them, their own companies, but they can also have the freedom to charge the consumers however much they want. Um, and like I said, AT&T could charge companies such as Comcast and Dish more money, um, and then they could threaten to black out networks such as CNN, TNT, and PBS, and only offer them on certain direct Um, and AT&T's defense to this was uh, that they didn't already own any TV networks so that the merger with Time Warner uh, would not reduce the number of competitors in the marketplace because um, Time Warner wasn't really competing with AT&T. And AT&T is also offering to not black out any of those networks that I had just previously mentioned for a period of seven years. And the court ruled that the government failed to establish that the proposed transaction was going to 
in a lessened competition. So they really feel like there's still going to be a lot of options for consumers. Um, the potential issues are, you know, there's the risk of exclusivity. Um, they can charge premium prices and kind of turn it into a, or it, it could potentially turn into more of a club rather than just a provided service. Um, they, they might toy, toy with prices to drive their customers to their particular platform or exclude certain time worth content that they don't feel like fits into their framework. Um, the consumer privacy, at and now has access to more sensitive consumer information uh, because they're controlling both the content and uh, the medium by which the content is distributed. And the consolidation of companies historically doesn't tend to lower the costs for consumers. There are some positives though. Um, this could result in uh, a competitor to the cable networks and it could draw in advertisers that would cover some of the costs of programming and those advertisers would use the data on, the subscri on its subscribers to target them with more relevant advertising to their particular uh, interests. And this would be at and way to compete with Google and Amazon. Uh, I wouldn't, I mean, I would classify it as successful for AT&T and Time Warner, but not for the, for the general public. Um, AT&T and Time Warner, like it was said in the lawsuit, was really a win-win. You know, they were getting a lot of money and they could, they could dictate the prices for the public regardless. And I mean, I feel like anytime there's a, a lawsuit, that's kind of a, a red flag, but the court ruled in their favor and the outcome of that on the public is yet to be determined. Thank you all.